Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to all of our witnesses for the work that you do. Um, I, I want to uh, start with you, Mr. LaRose, and, and say at the outset, I, I was very impressed by your testimony and by the work that you are doing in Ohio to protect the physical integrity of our elections, but also then to defend the integrity of our elections against uh, all of the misinformation that's out there. Um, that said, I, it seems we've still got a very, very big problem in terms of public perception. Um, when something like 40% of Americans uh, believed that the 2020 election was stolen, um, about 60 to 70% of Republicans, I saw a poll uh, that suggested uh, in Ohio, 62% of uh, Republican primary voters in 2022 uh, believed that the 2020 election was stolen. Um, I, I, I trust you agree with me. That's a very dangerous phenomenon. I mean, if I were to believe that a presidential election were stolen, um, I would be losing faith in my democracy and the system of government in our country. Um, clearly, that is the, the root cause of the threats of violence that many uh, nonpartisan election officials across the country are, are facing. So I, I guess my question for you is what what more needs to be done? What should uh, elected officials, responsible leaders in our country be doing to um, to address that false belief out there and to restore the confidence of all Americans in that, that our elections have integrity? Well, thank you, Congressman. And, and you know, in some ways, I, I guess I find the silver lining to every cloud. Uh, the fact is that folks are interested in this topic right now at a level they wouldn't normally be. And so I view this as an opportunity to educate people about the safeguards that exist um, and uh, to make sure that that information is available in all parts of our state. I'll give you a couple examples. We've worked with our county boards of elections and had them set up uh, booths at their county fair where people can come and, and vote on their favorite deep fried fair food or whatever. That's just the hook to get people to come over because when they do, they'll see a voting machine and they may be inclined to say, well, hey, is this the one with the secret foreign algorithm in it? And instead of laughing at that person, it's a chance to engage with them and now teach them that, that voting machines are never connected to the internet. They're tested before each election, audited after each election, et cetera. We've worked with, uh, again, the diverse communities from throughout the state to, to help empower those community leaders to be sources of accurate information about election integrity. And you know what? We've put out the challenge. If you believe that there are big problems in our elections, sign up to be a poll worker. Put your money where your mouth is. Spend the, the long day of doing this work. Uh, what we found is that when people do that, they come out of the experience saying, you know what? Elections uh, are run honestly and, and reported accurately. Uh, I, those are just a few ideas, and, and, and those are things that we're doing here in Ohio. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And, 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 you know, I'm sure you also agree just very simply, all of us as public officials just need to tell the truth about about our elections, because when we don't, it, it um, encourages uh, our constituents to to lose confidence. Um, Ms. Oliver, um, uh, you know, we've heard a lot about what happened in New Mexico. I, I, I assume that a, a lot of the lies and misinformation that, that led to those threats uh, we're spreading on on the internet, uh, on social media platforms. Uh, I I often say that the the big lie is the virus, but Facebook is the wind, and it, it's it's not just that these things appear on the internet. It's that the large online platforms um, do write these algorithms that uh, that basically connect every single person with a propensity to believe in conspiracy theories with conspiracy theories. Um, if, uh, if, if you're on the right, it'll push you further right. If you're on the left, it'll push you further left. Um, the, the, these companies design their networks in a way that encourages the spread of information that makes us angry at each other, that increases our divisions from one another. Um, so I, 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 I see you nodding. So I, I assume <laughs> something that, that you agree with. Uh, we, we are, uh, a number of us are working. Uh, in Congress on legislation that uh, would hold these social media platforms more accountable uh, for the way in which they amplify and recommend information to uh, to the American people uh, to uh, to deal with with these kinds of threats. Is that something that you think would be helpful? Absolutely, Congressman. Thank you. I, I think that's a worthy effort, and I think 
you know, just among my Secretary of State colleagues, uh, you know, I, I think we all share that concern, right? Both the mis and disinformation from the right and the mis and disinformation from the left. Uh, and in fact, what we know for a fact, when we all started heavily engaging in this cybersecurity work about five years ago, um, was that, you know, foreign entities, uh, particularly Russia, Iran, et cetera, were taking advantage of, uh, of those divisions. Um, and gonna, so- I'm gonna have to interject, uh, I apologize for, um, I 